You're watching CNA Heroes. Here's Lisa Sweet. As much of the United States attempts to reopen after weeks of isolation and physical distancing, COVID-19 continues stealing the lives of Americans, especially the frail and elderly and those who take care of them. We're hearing more stories of recovery from this deadly virus, even among the oldest segments of our population. And this is great. It is testament to the skilled care and important people taking care of them. While we celebrate the recoveries and the negative COVID test results, let us not forget those who have given their lives in service. It is real, it is very real. For some families, the losses have been devastating. Susanna Pabatao and her husband Alfredo married 44 years ago in the Philippines and started their family having five children. In 2001, the couple and the three youngest children immigrated to the United States, settling in Palisades Park, New Jersey. They became American citizens more than a decade ago. Both Pabatao's were very hard workers and devoted themselves to helping others. Alfredo worked as a transport aide, taking patients between rooms and departments at a hospital in New Jersey, and Susanna as a CNA at a nearby nursing home. In mid-March, Alfredo started experiencing a fever that reached 102 degrees. He went to his doctor who told him to go to the emergency room. He was admitted that night to the very hospital where he worked as a transport aide. That was March 19th. That very same night, Susanna started experiencing symptoms too. She had a fever that fluctuated, but it hovered around 103 degrees. So Susanna and her daughter tried to get tested for COVID. For three days in a row, the pair woke up at 7 a.m. to wait in line at the local test site. Her mother, tired, fought through her illness while waiting for hours in their car for COVID testing, but the site hit capacity each time and they were turned away before getting tested. By March 23rd, with her husband still in the hospital intensive care unit, Susanna went to the same hospital with fever, difficulty breathing, and difficulty swallowing, where she too was admitted. Susanna was responding to treatment at the hospital for a few days and doing fairly well until Alfredo died just two floors away in the intensive care unit on March 26th. After being told of Alfredo's death over the phone, Susanna became resigned to her illness. She instructed her daughter where to find the life insurance and the 401k paperwork. Susanna also asked her daughter Cheryl to locate her do not resuscitate order because she wanted to sign it. That night, Susanna had a rapid decline in vital signs and doctors intubated her. Four days later, on March 30th, Susanna died. Alfredo tested positive for COVID-19 about six days after being swabbed. But upon Susanna's death, the family was still awaiting test results. Because of coronavirus restrictions in the hospital, each parent died alone on a separate floor, the children out of reach. The Pabatao's daughter said, as hurtful as this is, I see it as a great love story. They just couldn't live without each other. Susanna's daughter wrote in her obituary, my mom, Susanna Pabatao, lived her life full of compassion. She genuinely loved her job. She took care of the elderly, 
with their whole heart. She's the one that's there to hold their hands and console them when their own family doesn't show up. She once told me that it was her way of fulfilling what she wasn't able to do with my grandmother since we left the Philippines when she was at old age and she wasn't able to take care of her. Susana Pavatao, your dedication and sacrifice have not gone unnoticed. Thank you for your years of caring for the elderly. Your death is a loss for your family and also the long-term care community you so generously served. Everyone, please join me in honoring the life and the work of Susana Pabatao, CNA hero.